Hello and welcome our dear viewers to a new episode of Windows I am Basmataha. Indeed, digital transformation is important and is a must in hospitals in order to raise efficiency and also to offer good health services. We will tackle this issue today in addition to what is meant by PFA, its significance, uh, missions, objectives, and also how uh, it could serve non-medical students and also uh, citizens. To shed uh, more light uh, on this issue, I'm honored to have here in the studio Dr. Uh, Mariam Abdullah, Training Courses Executive. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us on ITV International and for coming today. Thank you, Basma. Thank you. It's such an honor for me. Really. Thank you so much. Uh, first, uh, what is meant by uh, PFA? Well, PFA is uh, stand for Princess Fatma Academy. We are um, authorized by the Ministry of Health. We are Princess Fatma Academy is a role play institution for continuous medical education for all the medical and also the non-medical students. We have the raise up and we are the first hand done under, of course, the patronage of Dr. Khalid. That Dr. Khalid Abdullah. Yes, Dr. Minister. Khalid Abdullah, of course, yes, of Ministry, of Ministry of Health. Ministry of Health, yes. yes. So we are providing all the medical education needed for all the medical and non-medical doctors. That's what meant by PFA. We are raising our slogan to raise awareness of how important it is to have a medical background, even if you are not a medical student. That's our aim, and our, that's going to give us the main purpose of establishing PFA. We are established in 2025, 20, uh, and will continue until now. Okay, Dr. Mariam, we need to, to learn more from you about its mission and also the vision. Well, PFA has a very important vision that all the students and the curiosity of the students came after graduation, what I'm going to do next, what's going to be my next step. Is there anyone to guide me or show me the light or the right route to how I'm going to update my career? So this is us. This is why we established PFA. The, the ministry, the Egyptian ministry established in family because we need to highlight the importance of this question. This is our vision mainly and that's why we are going to help all our trainees and all our students to achieve this goal. Our mission is to raise and the quality of the human life because if you know how to make a good medical background, even if you are not a medical student, you're going to help yourself, help your relatives, help your families. This is our important mission. And that's why we are going viral here, national and international, to raise the most important way of this mission. Okay, doctor, also we need to learn mo more about the facilities uh, also and the services. Well, PFA has right now is 14 facilities. We have a well-equipped labs, dental labs, uh, human labs, and also I want to highlight that we are the only place in Egypt that certified to have a cadavers. We are all the doctors came with the real mannequins, cadavers, real real cadavers here. We are authorized to have this because you need to know as a physician how to or a surgeon, how to operate, how to, how, if you need any something in the surgery, how to use the right tools. We are the only right place that we are authorized to have for this cadaver here in Egypt. All the facilities and all the labs are well qualified and well established to help the trainees. We are here to help them how they can use all these equipments for their own good and for the good of the patients also. Mm. Well, doctor, also we need to know more uh, from you about the sections and also uh, the coordination uh, between the academy and also the different uh, agencies and institutions. Well, right now we have many partnership, mainly with American Heart Association, because we are raising the importance of how to save a life. Because now this, this program is very important, not only here in Egypt, but it's going viral. Because now American Heart Association is considering like to be number one in helping a CPR because this is mainly has happened to you or to anyone in front of your side maybe. So this is mainly one of our cooperation with American Heart Association also with World Health. So many those are the many two institutions. Okay, also doctor, uh, I need to know more from you, uh, from you about uh, the role uh, of uh, uh, PFA in the recent Population Health and Development uh, uh, Global Congress. Yeah, uh, we joined the Congress. We had a role there. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Uh, we had two roles. 
my role and the PFE role. The PFE role was mainly to spread the awareness about the importance, as I told you before, as CPR, because we are under the supervision of American Heart Association and we are certified about this. So this is mainly we are raising the importance of raising awareness program. Of course, after the supervision of Dr. Sahar Farak, our general director of uh, Princess Fatma Academy. So we are going after her directions that raising awareness program is one of the most important programs. It contains four chapters, quality, infection control, CPR, and first aid. Those also can be given for the non-medical students. That's why we, was my idea came in the, in the Congress that we came a mannequin that, <laughs> that has a, a hair, a wig hair, and sunglasses, and a lab coat. And w because, you know, when you enter the Congress, there is different booths. So we wanted us to be unique. Yes. That's why we made, yes, we made this mannequin as a role model, as a PFA instructor, and all, I guess many, many of the Congress came for us because of the mannequin. We called her Dr. Phoebe <laughs> as a nickname, Dr. Phoebe. And also we had the mannequins of the CPR in front of, in front of our booth. And also some students, and not only students, also children came and practiced CPR in front of our sites. There was an online session for CPR. So this was mainly our raising importance, our raising awareness for how important it is to have a medical background even if you are not a medical student. Yes, uh, thinking out of the box. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, it was, it was a very good idea. A creative one, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it was a very good idea, and Dr. Sahar really has helped me a lot to achieve this goal, because the American is also, uh, as far as I remember, also uh, Dr. Khaled has come and taken a photo with us, with the American and with Dr. Sahar and the, in the booth, because it was really a very catchy thing, and it was raising the important slogan of the American Heart Association, saving a life. So it, it, it was a good one, yes, actually. Yes. Uh, to what extent uh, do you see that it achieved its goals so far? Actually, by, uh, by the, we made like a Google form, and we had a registration over like over 3,000. 3,000 students or 3,000 doctors has came and achieved. This is mainly what, what we wanted, to raise the awareness mm -hmm. of how important it is to have CPR, medical education, medical background. This was mainly our role in the Congress and actually achieved it, we achieved it really good. Great. Also, how uh, can uh, it serve non-medical students and also uh, citizens? Yes, right now we are raising, as I told you before, the program of raising awareness. This raising awareness can be taken for all the medical and non-medical students and all the citizens, even if it's an intermediate citizen or it's a highly educated citizen, it's okay. It's just the idea of knowing how you can save a life, maybe a situation, a health situation is happening in front of your side. Someone mm -hmm. needs a CPR, infection control, what happened before in COVID-19. If we are not well known or well aware of how to use the right infection control tools, maybe the virus is going to be spread. Mm -hmm. That's why you combine all the four chapters into one program. It's called Raising Awareness. And right now, several universities have come to PFA to take this program. And actually, it's, the progress is very good. That's why if anyone needs any health condition, if anyone passed by any health condition, is happening, just he needs to contact us and we're going to be right away for him. Yes, even if he or she has not uh, yes, yes. any medical background. Absolutely, absolutely. Even if he isn't, uh, I, uh, as far as I remember, there was a child, yes, mm. there was a child and children in the Congress, they made an online CPR in front of their side and there were just children like five or three, seven something like this, uh, seven to five, five to seven years old, something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's good. They know how to make a CPR to mm -hmm. the mannequin. Great. So very yes. young. Very young. Very maybe. young. It's, it was very young. And everyone was happy. And actually, this, this is our aim. This is our goal, to achieve, ha to know how to have a medical background. It's very important to have a medical mm -hmm. background. And to spread the, uh, that yes. knowledge. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. It's very important because maybe it's to your mom, to your dad, some of your a family, relative. Yeah, yes. a relative, maybe even if a foreigner in front of your side in the street. Yes, yes uh, it's very important to have it. Okay, well, BFA um, is based in Egypt and embodies the philosophy of a spreading healthcare awareness. How do you see the significance of spreading this awareness 
not only on the national level, but also uh, on the international level. Okay, right now on the national level, we are cooperating with several facilities and several institutions to spread the awareness of the importance of how to have a medical background. Because after graduation, all the medical students they just stop at this point. They don't know what to do next. They don't know what is the next station, how I'm going to improve my skills, how I improve my medical background. So on the national, on the national situation, we are going to collaborate with several institutions and several places to help them to give these courses. We have several courses, if, uh, if you can give me a chance to say, because we are not only dental or medical, we have also administrative courses, um, life coaching, uh, we are going to English and ICDL also, so we, are all, we want to like, cover up all the courses that can be used for any student, not only medical student. And this is our next phase, this is what we are going to, to do in the next phases. So this is on the national. On the international, we are cooperating an association with several, with several companies and several facilities as American Heart Association, World Health Organization, and others to go. Yes, uh, also PFA had the privilege on working for uh, several medical programs like, for instance, uh, infection control. So we need to know more from you about uh, this yes, uh, yes. program. One of our most famous and successful programs is the infection control program and TOT. Training. Yes, training for training. Yes, 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 training of trainers. Training of trainers now is going his uh, sixth wave and it's very, very successful programs uh, from all the government, uh, I, I guess. Yes, and every time... Trainer for a trainer, uh, TOT, training for trainers. Training for trainers. Yes. Yes, uh, even, even I, myself, I took the program and I got that certificate from it. Because it's important if you are in the medical, in the medical background, you need to know how you want to be, a, if you want to be a trainer, how you give the right information how to deliver it right to the student. If you want to be a trainer, a medical trainer, it's not easy at all. Actually, the program is, is difficult and it's not easy to pass it. It's just, it's not an easy thing to do or to be an instructor or a medical instructor. That's why we have made a spotlight to this point, actually, to how to be a medical educator, how to give the right information, how to deliver it right, how to, how to know if you are having a several student, not all of them are good. Some of them are just like, you know, they are not going to concentrate in the program, as uh, just entering for, to, 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 to take the certificate, something like this. That's why you need to grab the attention of the student, how you are going to deal with him, how you're going to handle all uh, his uh, silly situations. And it happens, it happens a lot actually. Mm -hmm. That's why this program actually is very successful. And now it's going to be six weeks. Yes, so we have also another program, training for trainer, but not for a medical education. If you want to be an instructor, but not in the medical field. Also, it's, it's in the PFA modules. As for the quality control, now we have more like six to seven modules of the quality controls with hand-on experience in all the hospitals. All the trainees came, has a hand-on experience. They go to the hospital, see in front of their sides the patients, real patients, and how we're going to deal with them, enter all the labs, all the COVID places that were in the hospitals, to know how to wear the kits right. And actually, it's gonna, we are going to, uh, yes, we are going to open another wave in next month. Yes. Well, Doctor, you faced many uh, challenges, of course, and difficulties. How did you overcome uh, them so far? Actually, this was uh, with the help of Dr. Sahafar, of course, General Director of PFA, because she has helped us a lot in improving PFA facilities and improving PFA courses. Of course, as any institution, sometimes we have some financial issues or financial funds. Uh, also, you need to be always updated with the equipment, the labs, the equipment, the mannequins. So Dr. Sahar Farak mainly she was the role model and she was our superhero in this, uh, in this problem. And actually, I want to say that she has restored a completely dental lab. It, make, it made him from zero to a hero, actually, from zero to hero.
Yeah. Uh, yes, and also we grab another uh, program. It's called the simulation program. That because when any physician wants to try to make a simulation on a patient or something like this, it's like a simulation for all the case scenarios that, that happen. You enter with, with the tools or the physician tools, and it pops up when you do something wrong. It's called a simulation uh, program. It actually, it's amazing because it helps the physician to know how, how to enter the right tool in the right place without making any harm to the physician. And it's, it's very costly because to have an, uh, such a thing in an institution, it's really, it's really costly. So actually, Dr. Sahar Farak is our he superhero in this. Well, great, uh, Dr. Mariam. And dear viewers, a short break and we will be back, so stay tuned. القادمة من مسيرة العمل الوطني تفرض علينا وضع الإنسان المصري في مقدمة أولويات الدولة من خلال إطلاق استراتيجية شاملة لإصلاح وتطوير منظومة التعليم تتوازى مع البدء في تطبيق منظومة التأمين الصحي المتكامل الفترة دي هي بصراحة خطوة كويسة جدا كلام ولا في الأحلام الناس مش مصدقة نفسها تضافركم معانا هينجح سواء كان في التعليم او في الصحه والكلام ده للمفكرين والمثقفين والاعلاميين بالاضافه للمجتمع اي حد عنده قوائم انتظار يتصل بالرقم الساشن وربنا هيكرمه ان شاء الله. قوائم الانتظار مع حضرتك. لن ينجح اي نظام في الدولة البصرية تأمين صحي تعليم استثمار تنمية الا بالاستقرار والامن صراحة حاسس بالشعب لا في تغيير في البلد مس قلوب المصريين كلهم ادوا دفعة للنجاح وشجعوا وحطوا ايديكم معانا في ان احنا المنظومه تنجح. انا لو تخيرني بين ان انا اكل ولا اعالج دول؟ لا اعالج دول. Welcome back, uh, dear viewers, and still with Dr. Uh, Mariam. Dr. Mariam, how significant is it to have a medical background? even if you are not a medical student. Hi, so as I told you Basma before, right now any health condition can happen to you or any of your relatives or maybe a life situation in front of your side. So to have a medical background is very important even if you are a medical student. That's why PFA mainly or Dr. Saha mainly has raised the awareness of how important to have the raising awareness program because we combine the all four chapters into one module, one program of most important and significant headlines of any critical or any life situation you can handle if you passed or took this program. Any life situation, any health condition situation, sometimes maybe to yourself, maybe to yourself, maybe to your family, maybe to anyone. That's why have a medical background is very important. It's very important just to say I'm going to the home remedies or I know how to do or uh, I'm just going to pass by. It's not important. No, it's important because you can save a life. You can be your own hero. You can save anyone's life. Well, I would like you also to send a message to uh, non-medical students and also to citizens. Uh, what would you like to tell them? I would like to tell them that if you have any medical background, you can save a life. 
even if it's a tiny one, you can save a life. Uh, maybe your, your child, maybe uh, something happens to him suddenly. Anyone, just having a medical background is very important to you and your family. You can save your, sam your family from a damage or a fire or an instinct bite even for your child. So it's very important to have the right medical background. Okay, moving now to a very close uh, point, which is uh, digital transformation. Yes. So, uh, how do you see the requirements of carrying out a digital uh, transformation in a health sector? Well, a successful digital transformation right now, it has multiple ac uh, aspects, organizational and technological. So, one of the most requirements, important requirements is called robust infraction robust infraction or infrastructure, we call it also robust infrastructure, is an important and strong rival IT tool. It's one of the most amazing to secure your data, your network, your cloud solutions, everything to be encrypted and cryptized. The implementation of this robust cyber security, we call it also a robust cyber security because it's a cyber security system it's enclosed with all the security system with the data and you're going to be protecting, protecting all the sensitive, sensitive data for the patient. All the sensitive data will be encrypted. It will, all of them is going to be safe. So for making a successful digital transformation, it's very important to have this requirement. Yes. Also, how could uh, learning about modern technologies used in healthcare contribute to uh, providing good health uh, services to uh, patients? Well, uh, learning more about the modern technologies, yes. yes, it's very important to have modern technologies because you're going to enhance you to take a precise decision making. Right now, all the physicians can take uh, a decision in a matter of fact in a minute or, or two minutes maybe. So learning about modern technique and modern solutions and modern learning tools is going to help you to make a precise, more precise decision because you're going to have a real-time data and analyzed data. All the data is going to be saved and organized and on time and adapted analyzed data also is going to help you to give a real precise decision. This is the first thing. The second thing... And accurate, very precise. Yes, yes, very yes, precise and, and very accurate and on time. So mm -hmm. it's going to help all the healthcare sector to make uh, the right precise decision in the right time, in the right moment, and it's very, very important. The other, the other learning method or the other learning tool, you can say, is going to be the AI. The AI yes. here, yes, it's our... It's like our new hero. It's, it's, it's trending, the trend, AI, AI. What's meant of the AI in the healthcare? Actually, now the AI has a very, very powerful algorithm. This mm. algorithm can detect early diseases and also it can prevent them. It can analyze data, analyze medical imaging, and also give you all the treatment and remote, all the remote things you can need at home. Mm. Maybe later on you are go not going to need to go to the hospital. All things are going to be encrypted. All the data is going to be encrypted and be on the AI. Mm. Also, uh, recently the Ministry of Health, as you know, started using AI in most of the hospitals, mm. uh, of course, in order to raise the efficiency and also to provide good health uh, services. Uh, indeed. Also, uh, I would like to ask you, how do you see the significance uh, Dr. Khaled Abdel Ghaffar, Minister of Health, uh, clarified the significance of launching program to raise the awareness of workers in the ministry about uh, cyber security. So, how do you see the significance uh, of that? Well, cyber security is one of the critical and important points in digital transformation because cyber security is a very is a whole a whole healthcare system. So you need to initiate a good cyber security unit. You need to know how to train all the healthcare sectors on the cyber security unit. You need to know, be aware of all the attacks, cyber security attacks, and all the dimensions that can happen. Because you know, in a basma, in any system, attacks can happen. Cyber attacks can happen. So you need to have a well-qualified equipment and so well qualified trainees and well-qualified healthcare sectors to be aware of these healthcare attacks.
So cyber security to be established right, you need to have the right places, the right units to be established. Mm. And also it is very significant to train workers uh, on that technique. Yes, yes, it's, it's very significant. Also, you need to know how, how to train on this because not all the whole skill sectors now are opening to the new idea of using AI just as going the, on the old method. They are not mm -hmm. opening to use the AI, the technology. You're going to have to train them from, from scratch, like we are saying, from scratch. They are going to forget everything and learn how to be computerized, how their brain can think and to be computerized. So mm -hmm. without a good system in cybersecurity, without making a good unit in cybersecurity, without having a good training and a good equipment, a good healthcare sectors, it can be done. And we heard recently that there were training courses for workers in order to help them to learn more about yes. uh, that technique. Yes, right? Yes, yes right. We, there was a launching uh, of the last training program for 100, uh, after the patronage of Dr. Khaled, of course, that 100 uh, doctors are going to be the first trainers, like, like we are going to say, first trainer for the digital transformation. And right now, digital transformation is entering all the sectors of the Ministry of Health. Even for us in PFE, we are holding a course for digital transformation. We need to know what's the digital transformation, what's the cyber security, how, what's meant of having an encrypted data, what's meant by having an AI and how can I use it in the medical imaging of the patient. So we are really focusing and spotting the light on this because right now this is the future, this is what's coming. You need to also to be updated and embarrass all the healthcare sector about this point. Mm. So doctor, we heard that uh, health ministry announced that all uh, presidential initiatives are mechanized. So, uh, so how will that help in improving the health uh, conditions so far? Yes, because right now it's is going to be adapted as an AI and the technology when it's going to be adapted in all the healthcare units. All of, all of things is going to be computerized. The AI, the machines, even the imaging. Right now you can be in the ambulance and all the results, the images, everything can be transported directly to the hospital. Mm -hmm. You don't need to wait to, until you go to the hospital and they make a checkup for you. No, no. Everything now is going to be computerized with the AI. We're going to have a cyber, as I told you before, a cyber security unit. So cyber security units are registering all the data, all the patient data. And with the using of the AI, we can detect, early detect for all the health risk uh, issue you can face. Yes, this is my coming question. Uh, yeah. How do you see or how far is it significant to establish uh, cyber security, security units and also to train workers in the ministry uh, on that uh, technique in order to uh, secure information yes, to what extent? Yes, they need to know how to impress the technology, how to go on with the technology. They need to know the importance of the digital and the cyber security because when you establish a cyber security unit in the place in the hospital or in an institution, medical institution, you're going to be, everything is going to be computerized. And to the extent that you will have all the information without the need of any, anyone. Just everything will be computerized. So, mm -hmm. yes. Yes, also, Doctor, I would like to know more from you about your experience uh, during the first Global Congress on Population Health and Development. Uh, you took part in uh, that yes. event, that y great event. Yes. So, I, I would like to know more from you about. Uh, this experience and your role and what you gained from uh, that uh, great event? Uh, actually my role was uh, I, I was innovation the ideas because as I told you before we had several booths in the PFA and we uh, sorry in the, in, the, in the congress we had several booths so we needed to be catchy and we had the spotlight on us that's why we created first of all the module of Dr. Phoebe and the mannequins, the CPR mannequins, and how we're going to demonstrate live, session, live sessions of how to save a life. And also we made like a spin the wheel. It's, it's a game, so when you press on the laptop, you're going to have 10% discount, 20 discount voucher on all the courses to the PFA Academy. We also have some coffee break. So all, all the ideas 
was not easy to meet and not easy to be on the real time because actually we are very, very, very short time. We had a very short time to operate all these facilities. And actually it was good because we have gained, we have gained what we needed to raise awareness, to raise the medical awareness. So it, it was a, great, a good idea. Yes. Uh, also, doctor, uh, I would like to know more from you about the challenges uh, in general of digital uh, health in uh, uh, in healthcare. Well, as in as any system, digital information system is like any system. It can has some cyber attacks, defrations. Uh, not all the health sectors now are open to the idea of using digital transformation and using the technology of the AI. So all these challenges are facing us. So you need to establish a good cyber security unit. You need to establish a very good way and trainees and healthcare sectors to use the right technology. And you need to have a plan. To, ha to have a plan if anything happens, you need to have a security rule. It's, it's called a firewall. It's called a firewall. So if any attacks happen, you need to be updated of all the attacks, of all the cyber attacks that happened before. You need to have, as I told you before, another plan like a reduced incident. It's called a RIC, yes, reduced RIP, reduced incidents plan. Because when you are facing an attack, you need to have an action immediately, or maybe all the system can go down. That's why all these challenges need to be taken in consideration in the cybersecurity systems. Okay, may I ask about your aspirations concerning this program? What, uh, what else do you need or what your requirements? Well, actually my aspiration is I'm going with the technology. The technology now is leading us. We are not leading her. The now the, the human thinking now is going, is going more and more than you can even think. Using technology is going to combine, the AI is going to combine both of us, the human and the technology. We are going to combine all of them in, in one product. It's called even the AI or cybersecurity, digital transformation. We're going to like we're going to improve the health care of a patient. We're going to improve the health care sectors. That's why it's very important to be innovation with the future, innovation with the technology, how to use them, how to use the right tools, how, uh, how to learn about the AI, how to learn about the digital transformation program. Yes. Also, doctor, I would like to know more from you. Of course, you told me the services, but I would like to know uh, more from you uh, in uh, elaborating way uh, the PFA services would you please tell us more about it? Yes, of course. PFA serves several services, of course. Not only training, but we're only having our own hotel because some of the students are not from, from Cairo. They came from, yes, they came other from, uh, yes, yes, and yes. other cities. So they need accommodation, so we provide this accommodation for them. We provide also cadaver labs. We provide renting the halls. We have several halls and several computer labs. We help in all the exams, the online exams. Sometimes some, someone needs to rent an exam, have an online exam. We help them also. We also giving online sessions, practical sessions. We having like seven complexes. Our main auditorium, our computer lab, and other rooms, our hotel, our venue. We have, we have a venue if you're having an uh, important event or something like this. If it can also help you on this. Mm. Yes. And also, doctor, to what extent do you see that uh, PFA achieved so far uh, its goals? Actually, because we found it in 25, so right now we are moving into our marketing plan step by step. We are moving into achieving our goals. We achieved like 50% of our goals. We want to go international. We want to raise the importance and the awareness of a medical background, even if you are not a medical student. So we are going into our way, and we want to help everyone who needs a medical, medical background. Well, Dr. Mariam, uh, our time has come to an end. I would like to thank you so thank much, you. Thank you, Dr. Basim. Mariam Abdullah, training courses executive. Uh, thank you so much thank for you. coming today. Thank you, Basma, so much. Thank you so much. And dear viewers, by that we come to the end of this edition of Windows. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more on ITV International. That was Basma Taha.